Hey, it's Bullfrog here. I've had some requests to see what my daily chicken routine is in terms of how I take care of my chickens. And uh, I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, it's actually well past midday. It's probably close to 1 p.m. And I'm actually gonna do my morning routine right now. This is usually something I would do at daylight, but um, wasn't able to do it and film it this morning because it was uh, actually raining outside. It's been gloomy and overcast. So I decided to just wait till midday to take care of the chickens and in the doing, um, you know, the sun has come out now and it's some better filming conditions. But it also demonstrates to show that um, I don't necessarily have to be strict about how I uh, take care of my chickens. I can kind of take care of them during the day when it's convenient for me. And so today that convenience is uh, now at midday. So first thing I'm going to do is take care of my free range flock which I've got gathered around me here. Uh, a few minutes ago when I came out of the house for the first time today, they, uh, they gathered up when I called them. They were just scattered around the farm here. And I'm gonna feed them. And I've got a mixture of just some laying pellets and some um, uh, um, cracked corn and scratch grain. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five and maybe six handfuls. That's it. That is my daily routine taking care of my free range chickens. Uh, so I tricked you a little bit. That's actually, the, the, that's it. I just, I feed them once a day and that's all I do. Now, um, in, the, in saying that, I also do throughout the day when I'm out here working around the farm, uh, when I'm home, I just kind of give them a once over. Something I can see already is that number one has a wound that he didn't have as of day before yesterday. I don't know about yesterday because I was gone all day yesterday. Um, but um, today I noticed he's got a wound back here. I'm gonna show it to you. So I don't know what that's about. I'm gonna take a look at that tonight. That is a part of my routine if any of them need any any attention or care or a good once over, I usually do it at night when they go to roost. If they roost in the trees, I get them down with a pole. I just stick the pole up underneath them and they step on it and I lower them down. If they're in the coop, I just grab them off the coop. Number one likes to roost in the coop, so this evening when um, when he goes to roost, we'll take a look at that wound. But that's it in terms of my free range flock. It's basically five or 10 minutes a day. Um, is all it takes to take care of them, add another five minutes together egg. But now I have a lot of birds in my coops that I use and keep separated out for breeding purposes. And that's gonna, the time consuming part. And I'm gonna show you that next. So here's the next uh, little coop I have to tend. This is really a brooder. These are uh, 14 pure cracker chicks. Yes, even the white ones are pure crackers. They do come out white once in a while. And uh, See, they are, they're really gorgeous chicks. Number one fathered all of these. This is the first time I've done a hatch that I confirm number one was the only father of. And uh, I think they came out gorgeous. And it is now time for them to free range. So um, today's the day I'm gonna turn them out and let them, uh, let them start getting acclimated to being out free and to be out with the group. So uh, let me get started here and see if I can't get these out after, I, after I'm gonna let them get a good drink of water first because it might take them a little while to figure out where the pond is at in order to get water from So slight change of plan on the direction my video is taken. I had uh, went over and filmed myself taking care of the coops, which is way more work than taking care of the free range flock. And uh, only to find out that my camera was shutting off so many seconds into each segment because my phone had overheated where I had set the phone up in direct sunlight and let it run and um and it got too hot so phone is cooled off by now and uh, i'm gonna take the video in a different direction when the rest of these biddies come out of the brooder here 
I've got some more biddies in my barn that I'm going to transfer to the outside brooder, and I'm going to show myself doing that and how I do that. And um, uh, so the video today is basically going to follow the rest of um, my day with my free range flock, and I'm going to save taking care of my coop flock for another day and another video. All right, so before I move the new biddies in, what's left in here is a mix of old poop, um, some pine shavings, and some leftover pine needles. When I started off, the uh, bedding was about that thick. And what happens over time is the chickens, or the chicks, I should say, through their scratching. You see these little bits right here? They just fall right through if you push them, kind of grind them against this fine mesh over time they grind this bedding down end up cleaning most of it for you because even the poop dries out and falls through down here other chickens love to stand under here and eat the scraps that fall through but um i'm going to leave what what little bit of this old stuff's in here i'm going to leave and let it let the new chicks compost it on down but i'm going to get me some um pine straw from just the ground out here and some leaves and whatnot and I'm gonna build this bedding back up for the new chicks yes I do use Spanish moss they love to eat this um, something that I've learned that surprised me is a lot of animals out here eat things that I didn't think were edible uh, chickens love to eat and the guineas and the turkeys love to eat pine straw they uh they eat the tips off. I don't know what they get out of it. I know pine straw when it's green has a lot of vitamin C in it. I don't know what it has in it when it's dead like this. But the chickens love to eat it. That's why I don't actually have a lot of pine straw under my pine trees around here because they eat a lot of it. Um, they love to eat Spanish moss. Um, my cows like to eat palmettas. I didn't think anything ate palmetto fronds, but the cows relish it. So. There's just a lot of stuff out here that animals eat that I wouldn't think animals would eat, but they do enjoy eating. But I'm going to keep putting in uh, pine needles like this, Spanish moss, and whatever else I can gather up with my hands. I got a rake around here, but I don't know what I did with it. I think it's on the other side of the farm. Okay, so I got the chicks I'm going to put in here. I've got, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Four of them are pure crackers, and one of them is half cracker, half American. It's a cracker. It's a cracker. This is the half American. cracker and then the last cracker and I think they might be a three or four cracker pullets and the the half American is a, is a cockerel so let me get this top down so they don't fly out all right they are in and established they've never been outside a day in their life so it'll take them for the rest of the evening to acclimate being out here it is a kind of mild weather it's probably in the 60s right now low 60s maybe high 50s with a good breeze so i'm in shorts and a t-shirt and it's a hair cool um, but they've got a lot of their feathering in already most of their fuzz is gone so i think they're going to weather it fine they got a hot plate in there although it doesn't feel like that hot plate's working uh, I uh, just turned the hot plate over a short time ago, maybe or so the breeze won't be so quick to keep it cool, and uh, we'll see if it ends up heating up or not. Light's on, so it should be working, but um, seems like maybe it's not, but we'll just have to see. This is an older one, so uh, it might be time to replace it. <clears throat> so it's now time for the new biddies to uh, sink or swim free range. 
I have confidence in them. Uh, my experience has been um, the crackers can do well free range turning them out um, even as early as four weeks so long as um, they've got a flock already established of adults that they can blend into. Now it's not unusual for me to lose biddies in the first few days um, just because they have no no life experience up to this point. Every Any survival skill they got is instinct. Um, but it's not going to take much for that instinct to, to sharpen into um, actual real world experience when the hawk makes a couple passes at them. Um, the ones that survive will quickly learn from that and then will become very quick, very alert, very quick to find cover. They'll probably be okay. The um, worst predator I have on young um, halfway mature birds like that are um, the sharp shin hawk. As a species, it, uh, it's a little, it's a hawk that specializes in catching songbirds and um, they're about the worst predator I have in terms of being effective at catching the crackers. Most bigger hawks aren't quick enough to catch them, not regularly. Sharp shin hawk can do it, although the sharp shin hawks around here that have learned how to do it, it, has, it takes them months. Every time a new individual moves in, um, it takes that individual months to learn how to do it. And the most recent one that moved in that got good at doing it, apparently my turkey killed. Um, I had found where, um, and this was about a month ago, I found where the sharp shin hawk had caught a American game bantam cockerel against the fence and I found the partially eaten cockerel there and just off to the side I saw some movement because it was at dusk when I found the body uh, the hawk was there paralyzed uh, unable to fly and unable to walk and it looked like to me what had happened was it looked like my big turkey hen I'm, I'm looking at her off camera and I'm pointing at, it, at her as if you can see her but uh, I think she drummed him to death when he when he was eating that that cockerel against the fence line so um that's been a month ago and i haven't seen a new sharp shin moved in yet so these have got a a very good head start um i think most of them will make it yeah i think these little ones will make it i'm gonna end this video by showing you um whatever's wrong with number one i'm gonna check him out tonight i'm gonna show how i get him off the roost and we'll check him over and we'll see what that knot is on his back I'm going to take him right off the roost. Oh, <laughs> he's a wild boy. He spurred me good. He didn't He didn't mean to do it. He just, he's got long spurs and kicked. Oh, I'll draw blood in a few minutes, but number one, let me get you, boy. Stand by. All right, I got him. I'm sure this probably hurts too. Let's see if you can see us. You got some good spurs on them here. Okay, let's look to see if there's anything about what's happening back here that might tell us what's going on. It's probably, and I'm sure handling it probably gonna, probably hurts. And I may not be too successful about getting this on camera. I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that ain't good. Mm. What I, I'm smelling of it, there's a wound here. I can't get a good look at it yet, but it is, there's a wound and it smells. Now, of course, I am smelling a, a chicken's butt, so I don't want to confuse the, nor his normal butt smell from the smell of the wound. But I don't think that's what I, I think this is the wound. I'm, yeah, this is the wound I'm smelling. So, I can feel this. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Can you see that? Can you see that? 
Now what is that exactly? I don't know. I can't necessarily tell whether he got snake bit or whether an ant, a predator, caught him and he fought to get free. And it, it hurts him to touch it. Easy, easy. But I got to be careful because when he kicks those legs, he ain't trying to spur me. He's just trying to get free, but them spurs are a big deal. If he got me in the wrist with those, I mean, deep enough and hard enough, it could send me to the hospital. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to try to film this. I'm going to doctor him up. I got some pretty strong topical antibiotic I can put on this that hopefully will help. And um, we'll see if it don't, he don't get better in a little bit. I might also give him some um, some oral antibiotics. So anyhow, I'm going to take care of that. So I'm going to let y'all go. This has been Bullfrog. Thank you for watching.